Velkommen, bienvenue, welcome. Fremda, étranger, stranger. Glücklich zu sehen, je suis enchanté. Happy to see you, bleib, reste, stay. Velkommen, bienvenue, welcome. Im cabaret, au cabaret, du Meine Damen und Herren, mesdames et messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, guten Abend, bonsoir, good evening, wie geht's, comment ça va, do you feel good? Yeah, I bet you do. Ich bin euer Konferenz, ja, je suis votre compère, I am your host, un sangre. Willkommen, bienvenue, welcome. Cabaret, oh cabaret, to cabaret. Your troubles outside. So life is disappointing. Mm. Forget it. We have no troubles here. Here, life is beautiful. The girls are beautiful. Even the orchestra is Polish <laughs> and Texas. You like Texas? Well, too bad, cause Texas likes girls. Rosie, Lolo, Frenchie, and Texas. Each and every one a virgin. You don't believe me? Don't take my word for it. Go ahead, try her. Outside it is winter, but in here it's so hot. Woo! Every night we have to battle with the girls to keep them from taking off all of their closings. So don't go away. Who knows? Tonight we may lose the battle.
bird? Uh, it is permitted. Oh, please. Uh, American? Oh, I might as well wear a sign, Yankee Doodle. <laughs> uh, Sherman, Berlin, Ernst Ludwig. Uh, Cliff Bradshaw, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Huh. Are we uh, slowing down for the German border? Uh, yeah. Oh, you've taken this trip before. Many, many times. You are a tourist? Uh, no. Uh, not exactly. I'm a writer, and I give English lessons. Ah. Would you care for a cigarette? Herr Ludwig? Yeah. Cigarette? No, thank you. Deutsche Grenzkontrolle. Ihre Pässe, bitte. Thank you. Ah. Welcome to Germany, Mr. Bradshaw. Yours? Yeah. Danke. Ihren Pass, bitte. Sie waren geschäftlich in Paris? Nein, auf einer Urlaubsreise. Bitte öffnen Sie Ihren Koffer. Danke. Haben Sie nur diesen Koffer? Ja, das ist alles. Thank you. I wish you'll enjoy your stay in Germany and a most happy new year. Deutsche Grenzkontrolle. Uh, what's in the bag? Oh, uh, baubles from Paris, perfumes, silk stockings, but uh, more than is permitted. You understand? Oh, I guess I've done a little smuggling myself. Oh, oh you are most understanding. I thank you very much. And I would like to see to it that Berlin will open its arms to you. We begin tonight, New Year's Eve. The Kit Kat Club, the hottest spot in Berlin. Telephones on every table. Girls call you. Boys call you. You call them. Instant connection. Uh, thanks, but I've still got to find a room. You have no room? But this is no problem. I know the finest residence in all Berlin. Just tell uh, Fräulein Schneider yeah? that Ernst Ludwig has recommended you. I can't afford the finest residence in all Berlin. I need something inexpensive. Oh, but this is inexpensive. It's very inexpensive. I, I don't care if it's awful as long as it's cheap. Oh, but this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, you will love it. Fräulein Schneider. You see, you see, you have a new friend, Ernst Ludwig. You have a fine place to live. And you have, perhaps, even your first English pupil. Yeah, so, welcome to Berlin, my friend. Welcome to Berlin. Welcome to Berlin. Welcome and bienvenue. Étranger, stranger, glicklich zu sehen, je suis enchanté. Happy to see you. Bleib da. Rest. Stay. So you see here, Brad Shaw, all comforts and with breakfast only 100 marks. Oh, it's very nice for Lance Schneider, but you don't have something cheaper. But for a friend of Herr Ludwig... Oh, very little money. But you will give English lessons, and you will have many pupils, and they will pay you, and then you will pay me, yeah? Fifty marks is my absolute limit. Unacceptable. You don't have anything else. I, I don't care how small, how far from the bathroom. But for a professor, this is more <laughs> suitable. I I'm not a professor. Think of me as a starving author. What do you have for a starving author? An author... A poet, you have the law. A novelist. And you will be most famous, there is no doubt. This is your room. Look, here for your clothing, and here somewhere for you to write. Come, sit. <laughs> A novelist, it's like years ago, and in all my rooms, persons of real quality. I can still only afford 50 marks. This room is worth 100, more than 100. 50. Sit. You say 50 marks, I say 100 marks. A difference of 50 marks, why should that stand in our way? 
As long as the room's to let. The 50 that I will get is 50 more than I had yesterday. Yeah? Yeah, when you're as old as I. <laughs> is anyone as old as I? What difference does it make? An offer comes, you take. For the sun will rise and the moon will set And you learn how to settle for what you get It will all go on if we're here or not So who cares? So what? So who cares? So what? When I was a girl, my summers were spent by the sea So what? And I had a maid doing all of the housework, not me so what? Now I scrub up the floors and I wash down the walls and I empty the chamber pot. If it ended that way, then it ended that way and I shrug and I say, so what? For the sun will rise and the moon will set and you learn how to settle for what you get. It will all go on if we're here or not, so who cares? So what? So who cares? So what? When I had a man, my figure was dumpy and fat. So what? Through all of our years, he was so disappointed in that. So what? Now I have what he missed and my figure is trim, but he lies in a churchyard plot. If it wasn't to be that he ever should see the uncaused in me, so what? For the sun will rise and the moon will set And you learn how to settle for what you get It will all go on if we're here or not, so who cares? So what? So who cares? So what? So, once I was rich and now all my fortune is gone so what? And love disappeared, and only the memory lives on. So what? If I live through all that, and I live through all that, 50 marks doesn't mean a lot. If I like that you're here, and I like that you're here, Happy New Year, my dear, so what? For the sun will rise, and the moon will set, and you learn how you towels. Come in. Fräulein Schneider. There you are. There's no hot water in the bathroom. It's the second time this week. Please excuse me, Herr Bradshaw. Oh, you have finally rented this room. Huh? Uh, this is Herr Clifford Bradshaw, the world-famous American novelist. <laughs> How do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Fräulein Kost. <laughs> Across the hall. <laughs> Please feel free, huh? Any time. Where are you? It's my nephew. <laughs> yeah, he is uh, visiting me from <laughs> Hamburg. <laughs> Come, we talk outside. We are disturbing here, Bradshaw. And take your nephew with you from Hamburg. Please accept my apologies here, Bradshaw. I guarantee she will not bother you again. Don't bother me? What is it now? Frau Schneider, it is 11 o'clock. Oh, Herr Schulz, 11 o'clock already. I was just showing here Bradshaw, his room here, Bradshaw. Here's oh. Schulz, who also lives here. Oh, please to me. Ah, oh, you're an American. I have a cousin in Buffalo, Felix Tannenbaum. It is possible you know him. <laughs> he has a wife, uh, Bertha. I hardly ever get to Buffalo. Herr Schulz is proprietor of the finest fruit market on the Nollendorf Platz. <laughs> Italian oranges, delicious. I will dress now. <laughs> Herr Schulz has been kind enough to invite me to join him for a glass of schnapps for New Year. <laughs> and a little fruit. <laughs> and after all, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'm in my bed <laughs> with a hot water bottle. Uh, perhaps uh, Herr Bradshaw? Huh? Oh, no, no, no. I, uh... Uh, another time. I want to wish you much marzal in the New Year. 
Uh, Marcel? It's Jewish. Means luck. Oh, thanks. Same to you. I got to your Fräulein in ten minutes. Good snaps. And the fruit. Mm -mm. And now, please, anything you require, knock on my door any time, day or night. Also, welcome to Berlin. Welcome to Berlin. Famous novelist. Open the Remington. Hello. That's what you came here for? Sitting all alone like that. You happen to catch my eye. Would you like to buy a girl a drink? Would you like to buy a boy a drink? Welcome, Welcome to, to Berlin. Berlin. Famous, Famous novelist. novelist. Yeah, you would. Come on over. Mesdames et Messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, the Kit Kat Club is proud to present a most talented young lady from England. Yes, <laughs> England. <laughs> she is so talented, so charming, so um. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Early yesterday, I said to her, "I want you for my wife," and she said, "Your wife? What will she want with me?" <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the glass of fashion and the mold of form, Fräulein Sally Bowles! You have to understand the way I am, my hair. A tiger is a tiger. Not a lamb, mein Herr. You'll never turn the vinegar to jam, mein Herr. So I do what I do. When I'm through, then I'm through. And I'm through. Toodle-o. Bye.
You're English. Absolutely. <laughs> You're American, but you speak English beautifully. I'm at table number four. Will you just keep talking, please? You can't imagine how starved I feel. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere people shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. Oh, yes, yes, don't stop, please. Uh, that's all there is. My name's Cliff Bradshaw. I'm from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. You never heard of it. Such a beautiful language. Are you alone? Yes. Then let me buy you a drink. But not right at this time. Meine Damen und Herren, Mesdames et Messieurs, Ladies and Gentlemen, it is almost midnight. Husbands, you have only ten seconds in which to lose your wives. Five, four, three, two, one! Happy New Year! about Mudville. Uh, oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is... Happy New Year. Uh, thanks. Why did you say you were English? Uh, a whim. You never had a whim? <laughs> oh, constantly. I used to love pretending I was someone else. Someone quite mysterious and fascinating. Until one day I grew up and realized I was mysterious and fascinating. <laughs> I'm Sally Bowles. Are you new in Berlin? Uh, yeah, I've only been here uh, three hours. Three hours? And how long are you planning to stay? Uh, well, I'm writing a <coughs> novel. I'll stay till it's finished. You're a writer. Would I know your books? Uh, it's highly unlikely. Anyway, it's book, singular. Was it a huge success? Uh, well, they said it showed promise. Promise? Let's talk about Sally Bowles. What part of England are you from, London? Stratford-on-Avon? Stonehenge? <laughs> oh, Cliff, you must never ask me questions. If I want to tell you anything, I will. Why did you come to Berlin to do your novel? Uh, well, I'd already tried London, Rome, Paris. Just looking for a place to write. Something to write about. And where are you staying? How about you? Where do you live? Over the club? We could sneak upstairs. Possibly. Later on, if you like. Sneak? <laughs> Max is most terribly jealous. Oh, Max, your husband. <laughs> no, he's just the man I'm living with. This week? <laughs> I say, am I shocking you talking like this? I say, are you trying to shock me? Trying to shock me? You're quite right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell, is there truly a place called Mudville? Oh, absolutely, it's in uh, New Jersey. <laughs> Hello. Happy New Year. Thanks. My name's Bobby. Oh, this is my friend, Victor. I was introduced to you in London, at the Nightingale Bar. The Nightingale Bar. But you were there, correct? Correct. I knew it. I'm fabulous with phases. Would you care to dance? Uh, not right now, thanks. Oh, but everybody dances together here. Not right now, thanks, oh, anyway. you Americans. You're so inhibited. But this is Berlin. So why don't you just relax? Take off your corset. Be yourself. <laughs> no, you know what is the trouble with English? It is not like German. No, it's not an exact language, but either one must memorize 50,000 words, either one cannot speak it correctly. Either one must memorize or one cannot speak. Uh-huh. Either or. Mm. 
Oh, the time is now finished. Oh, I'm in no hurry. Hey, no, no, no. The lesson is one hour. No another pupil is waiting. Well, what other pupil? No other pupil? Then I make a suggestion. I will telephone a lady friend, and she will bring a friend for you. Elsa, a genuine flapper. Uh, not tonight, Ernst. <laughs> you have not seen this, Elsa. Hot stuff. Believe me, in one minute, I guarantee you are making a pass after her. A pass at her. Uh-huh, pass at her. Hmm. Besides, I've got a date tonight. <laughs> a typewriter? What can one do with a typewriter? <laughs> not very much lately. Well then, come with me. We make a large whoopee. <laughs> For one thing, I've got a budget, and it only allows for a very small whoopee, unfortunately. Then you are my guest. Now, I show you the real Berlin. So come. We will acquaint with one another. As soon as I can afford it. Mm. Oh, it is difficult, you know. Adjusting to the idea of a poor American. But I tell you a secret. There's no need for this poverty. No. Now, if you're willing, I'll show you a most excellent way to supplement your income. Doing what? Oh, by taking very brief trips to Paris. Perhaps a few days each time. Nothing more, but it'll pay you well. Extremely well. Uh, come in. Oh. Here, Bradshaw, there is a young lady to see you. A young lady in a fur coat. A young lady? Fräulein Bowles. Oh, Bowles? Oh, well, ask her to come in. You are uh, old friends, you and Fräulein Bowles? From London, perhaps? Uh, from the Kit Kat Club last night. Last night? You are some snappy operator. Cliff! Mm. Yes, darling! Sally! <laughs> Will you be a dare and get my bag? It's lovely, Fräulein Schneider. All these wonderful old pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it anywhere. I'll unpack later. Unpack? But here Bradshaw did not mention... I'll just be here temporarily. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is not possible. How much are you paying? Uh, 50 marks. 60 marks. It is not the money. 70. I cannot permit... 80. This room is worth 100 more than 100. 80. 85. <laughs> Done! And now you make yourself cozy, Frau Bradshaw. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. Oh, such a to-do, huh? Uh, yes, well, I, I will uh, see you Friday for the next lesson. Then I tell you something. I think I'm taking from you the wrong kind of lessons. Sally, what the hell is this all about? Oh, would you guess I was terrified? Oh, were you? Well, what have you thrown me out? Can you imagine how that would feel, being thrown out twice in one day? Oh, you mean Max? Oh, dear Max. And you know whose fault it was, don't you? If you hadn't come to the Kit Kat Club and been so dreadfully attractive and recited poetry. Uh, listen, Sally, uh, about you staying You know what I'd love? A spot of gin. Gin? You've got some. <laughs> I mean, I think one must. Uh, no, I, I don't have any gin. Oh, well. Prairie oysters, then. Prairie oysters? I practically live on them. It's just a raw egg washed around in some Worcestershire sauce. It's heaven for a hangover. I haven't got a hangover. Say, that's quite a coat. <laughs> Should be. Cost me all I had. Little did I realize how soon I'd be unemployed. Well, what about your job at the club? Well, that's rather complicated. You see, one of the owners of the club... Oh, dear Max. Oh, you're divinely intuitive. I do hope I'm not going to fall madly in love with you. <laughs> Are you in the theatre in any way? No. Then you're safe, more or less. Though I do believe a woman can't be a truly great actress till she's had several passionate affairs and had her heart broken. Should have let Hans pay my cab fare. He's got all that money from Paris. Paris? He smuggles it in for some political party. Oh, Ernst is in politics. You didn't know? He goes to Paris about once a month and brings back pots of money. And he has to smuggle it in? Mm, it's terribly dangerous. <laughs> but Ernst is so resourceful. 
He's discovered the customs people almost never open the bags of non-Germans. So just before the border, you find some innocent-looking Englishman or American. It's hard to imagine an American that gullible. <laughs> House and Beinbrook. It means neck and leg break. I'm supposed to stop it happening, though I doubt it does. Listen, Sally. Drink. I think amazing. It, you know what it tastes like? Peppermint. Oh, well, it's your toothbrush glass. <laughs> I should have rinsed it. <laughs> Listen, Sally, you've got to understand. Oh, this is your novel. But it's in German. Mein Kampf. It's not my novel. I thought I should learn something about German politics. Why? You're an American. You know, I've never known a novelist before. Will I be allowed to watch you work? I promise to be incredibly quiet. Uh, Sally, I, I don't think I can work with someone else on the premises. I go out when you're writing. Take long, invigorating walks. In the middle of the night. And uh, there's another thing. Uh, look, I'm not a prude, at least. Are you homosexual in any way? Bobby thinks you are. Bobby? One of the boys at the club. He claims he met you in London. At the Nightingale Bar. Uh... It's possible. It is. <laughs> How fascinating. <laughs> and did you and Bobby have an affair? Did he say that? He implied it. The truth about Bobby is... He, he's not my type. <sighs> I say, am I shocking you talking like this? Oh, <laughs> not a bit. <laughs> but is it true? You're not just saying it, hoping I'll take my bag and run screaming into the night. Oh, the thought had occurred to me. But, uh, no, it's all true. However, it's not the sort of thing you generally go around advertising, is it? I guess not. And isn't that sad? Because I think people are people. I really do, Cliff. Don't you? I don't think we should have to apologize for anything. For example... If I paint my fingernails green, and it happens I do paint them green, <laughs> if someone should ask me why, I say I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty, I reply. So, if someone should ask about you and me one day, you have two alternatives. You can either say, oh, yes, it's true. We're living in delicious sin. Or you can simply tell them the truth and say, I met this perfectly marvelous girl in this perfectly wonderful place as I lifted a glass to the start of a marvelous year. Before I knew it, she called on the phone, inviting. Next moment, I was no longer alone, but sat reciting some perfectly beautiful was truly no less than a crime. Now I've this perfectly marvelous girl in my perfectly beautiful room and we're living together and having a marvelous time. Listen, Sally, it wouldn't work. You're far too distracting. Distracting? No, inspiring. <laughs> she tells. Perfectly marvelous tales of a thrillingly scandalous life, which I'll probably use as a chapter or two in my book. Whoa! And since my stay in Berlin was too forced creation, what luck to fall on a fabulous source of oh, stimulation. And perfectly marvelous too is her perfect agreement to be just as still as a mouse when I'm giving my novel a wow. Yes, I've a highly agreeable life in my perfectly beautiful room with my nearly invisible, perfectly marvelous girl. Oh, it's a taxi man. Hello, taxi man. Just leave them outside. I'll get them later. Seriously, Cliff. Please, may I stay? 
Sally, I can't afford... Oh, for a dare to please. I met this truly remarkable girl in this really incredible town. And she skillfully managed to talk her way into my room. Oh, I've got a terrible feeling I've said a dumb thing. Besides, I've only got one narrow bed. Everyone in Berlin has a perfectly marvelous roommate. Some people have two people. Two ladies. Two ladies. And I'm the only man. Yeah. I like it. They like it. They still for one. since New Year's, and what is it now, April? Your second? Your second? You think I do not know what goes on here? Sailors all the time, in, out, in, out. <laughs> God only knows what the neighbors think I have here. A battleship. A <laughs> well, I cost one sailor more, I warn you, I call the police. And if I cannot pay the rent? The rent is due each Friday, as always. No sailors. No rent. I move. Move? Move! And what am I supposed to do with your room? Out of the blue, she tells me I move? Is that gratitude for you? Only last week, I gave you another new mattress. Oh, sure. All right, all right. So I will leave the end of the week, since you insist. I insist. You insist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what about the sailors? Sailors? Well, I'm cost. If you wish to continue living here, you must not let me catch you bringing in any more sailors. You understand? Very well. So, it is the same as always. No, it is not the same as always. Do you hear? Fräulein Kost, I have put my foot down. Fräulein Kost! Fräulein Kost! Oh, Fräulein Schneider. 
Good evening. Oh, I showed such a surprise. You are occupied? No, no. Free as a bird. Oh, please forgive my appearance. Oh, but it is most becoming. Oh, thank you. Oh, I, I brought you a little something from the shop. Another little something? With my compliments. Oh, so heavy. What can it be? Pears. <laughs> Last Wednesday you brought me pears and such pears. <laughs> apples, possibly. No, Friday was apples. Friday was apples. So I cannot guess. Then, open. Oh, but I Schultz cannot believe what I see. Oh, this is too much to accept. So rare, so costly, so luxurious. If you bought me diamonds, if you bought me pearls, if you bought me roses like some other gents might bring for other girls, it couldn't please me more than the gift I see. A pineapple for me. If in your emotion you began to sway <laughs> Went to get some air or grabbed a chair To keep from fainting dead away It couldn't please me more than to see you cling To the pineapple Ah, it's from California Even so, how am I to thank you? Kindly let it pass Would you like a slice? That might be nice, but frankly, it would give me gas Then we will leave it here Not to eat, but see Present to his lady love. It makes me blush. There's no one. No one in the whole of Berlin who is more deserving. If I could, I'd fill your entire room with pineapples. <laughs> A pineapple. down for a few moments. My head is spinning. Good evening, Fräulein Schneider. Good evening, Herr Schulz. Oh, I am overwhelmed. Cost. I, I, I was looking for, I, I think I dropped a small coin, a, a groschen. It rolled this way. Mm. You're looking for a groschen. Yes. I'm looking for two marks. Mm.
It's not the novel. I'm writing to my mother, thanking her for the check. Oh, it finally arrived. She says she's knitting you a sweater. <laughs> You're joking. I've started a sweater for your friend, Sally. You sent her my measurements. The way she knits, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, and uh, she says, tell Sally to lay off the gin. She does not. Listen to this. We're really excited about you finishing your book. What a liar I am. It's my fault. If I weren't always dragging you off to party after party. But I like those parties. Truth is, I like this whole city. It's so tacky and terrible. Everybody's having such a great time. If this were a movie, do you know what would happen? There'd be a tidal wave. Or a volcano would arise. <laughs> well, maybe you should write for the cinema. As soon as I finish the novel. As soon as I start the novel. <laughs> Must be something to write about. <laughs> Sally Gold. Of course. <laughs> I told you I'd inspire you. The affairs of Sally. Ugh. But make me ravishing mm. and sublimely seductive. So no man can resist me. <laughs> Not even a very handsome, rather strange young American <laughs> who allows me to share his room and his bed. <laughs> and falls desperately in love with me. This is fiction. <laughs> A guaranteed bestseller. So now all I have to do is write it. Oh, poor Cliff. It is my fault. I'm afraid I am rather distracting. Oh, you're right. Who could possibly do any writing with you around? Oh, Sally, I didn't but mean... it's time, Cliff. I've never stayed so long with anyone. What's the matter? Got a better offer? Oh, dozens! One must keep mobile, mustn't one? I'm sure you have offers, too. Oh, dozens. A couple? Not one. Not even that persistent Gottfried... What's his name? Von Schwarzenbaum. Oh, von Schwarzenbaum. He phoned three times yesterday. And I don't get it. In America, if you tell someone you're not interested in them, you don't want to talk to them. In fact, you wish they'd go the hell away. They generally take the hint. But in Europe... Well, why did you give him your number? I must have been drunk. Well, whatever. You captivated him. I wish I could have been at that party. A fly on the wall. It wasn't that exciting, believe me. But it seems to have been exciting for Godfrey von Schwarzenbaum. Don't go. Don't go. Are you serious? One must keep mobile, mustn't one? Go to hell with him! What's come over you? Maybe I like you here! I need you here, I mean... You're the only, uh... woman I've ever... Listen, Sally, maybe you're the only girl I'll ever want. I... I've never felt this way before. You truly mean this? Or is it some sort of joke we'll love ourselves sick about later on? Well, if it's a joke, it's on me because I mean it more than I've ever meant anything. And now you want to tell me what's wrong? Oh, nothing. Not a thing. I'm pregnant. Are you sure? Uh, well, what are we going to do? What am I going to do? The usual thing, I guess. You've done it before. Oh, thousands of times. Well, don't, don't you think you ought to tell the father? Why? Well, I'll pay for the doctor for one thing. I do so hate it, Cliff. That awful doctor. Then maybe... And anyway, who is the father? It, it could be anyone. It could be me! Sally, it could be me! True. And Sally, if it is mine... Well, we'll never know. We could! We? Oh, yes! Nine months of being sick every morning! And then the happy day! And whom does it resemble? <laughs> Max! A horrid little German infant with a moustache! <laughs> Ordering us about! I'm willing to take that chance. Or, or perhaps an Oriental. I seem to recall a rather taciturn Malaysian. Sally, <laughs> will you do me a favor and shut up? Will you just be serious for a minute? I doubt it, This could be the best thing that ever happened to us. 
I doubt it. Because the truth is we're drifting. We have no focus to our lives. A baby would make all the difference, and it would to me. I'd get a job. I'd have to. I'd stay home nights, write the novel, wash the diapers, the whole bit. Sally, I'd be a wonderful father. I love kids. <laughs> this is totally crazy. I know. That's why I thought you might go for it. Listen, Sally, will you do one thing for me, please? At least... Would you at least think about this before you see the doctor? Maybe this time I'll be lucky. Maybe this time he'll stay. Maybe this time for the first time, love won't hurry away. He will hold me fast. I'll be home at last. Not a loser anymore, like the last time and the time before. Everybody loves a winner, so nobody loved me. Lady peaceful, lady happy, that's what I long to be. All the odds are in my favor, something's bound to me. Loves a winner, so nobody loved me. Lady peaceful, lady happy, that's what I long to be. All the odds are in my favor. Sally. Uh, Ernst. Oh, I, I do not wish to intrude. Well, would you like some gin? Uh, only if you will join with me. Well, just this once. <laughs> What's on your mind, Ernst? You remember I mentioned the possibility of an occasional uh, business trip to Paris? If you are interested, I think in the next few days. Uh, what would I have to do? Oh, it is so very simple. You go to an address I will give you. You pick up a small briefcase, you bring it back to Berlin, and I pay you 75 marks. 75 marks? And I promise you're giving help to a very good cause. Oh, well, whatever it is, don't tell me. I don't want to know. As you wish. How about tomorrow? <laughs> tomorrow? No, no. We're all going to a party. Oh, I think I'll skip it. But why, Clifford? Let's just say I'm turning over a new leaf. <laughs> turning over a new tree? <laughs> and you, Sally, you are turning over as well. Who knows? I mean, Cliff and I may just turn out to be the two most utterly boring people you've ever met. <laughs> but uh, you will go to Paris. Oh, absolutely. Anything for a buck. Prost! 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 You see, there's more than one way to make money. Money makes. The world go round, the world go round, the world go round. Money makes the world go round, it makes the world go round. 
So no lectures, please, about sailors. They're just lonesome, patriotic German boys. Oh, I have a duty. by consenting to give me her hand in marriage. <laughs> marriage? Yes. We marry in, in three weeks. Three weeks? So a little respect for the future Frau Schulz, if you please. 
Ja, ja. Frau Schulz. Oh, thank you, Herr Schulz. You were supreme. Well, what else could I do? <laughs> but such a magnificent lie to preserve my reputation. Why did I say three weeks? Why not three months or three years? In this way, she will find out the truth so quickly. Unless... Unless... Unless what? Uh, you said unless. <laughs> oh, but it is foolish. I mean, after all, who would have me? An elderly widower, bald-headed, with heartburn, and a little fruit. Am I such a bargain? An unbeautiful spinster with a few rooms to let, poorly furnished? I work 14 hours a day. I do all my own scrubbing. My right leg bothers me. I have palpitations. Well, I'm not a well man. Am I a well woman? <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? We're alive. <laughs> and what good is it? A long so if you'd even consider marriage? Well, I will consider it. Well, take your time, by all means. There's no hurry. We should discuss it. We must not marry merely to humiliate Fräulein Kost. I assure you, Fräulein Schneider, this is not the case. Let us be honest. Had she not seen us today, you would not have proposed today. Then tomorrow. You mean this? I had it in my mind. But it's all so impulsive. You, you hesitate because you've never been married. It frightens you. But believe me, it can work wonders. How the world can change. It can change like that. <laughs> Due to one little word. Marry. See a palace rise from a two-room flat due to one little word married and the old despair that was often there suddenly ceases to be for you wake one day look around and say somebody wonderful married me you do not think it would be better if we simply went on as before no oh the wonderful is to so I'll stay me Decided yet. Then you're engaged. Engaged? Engaged! Will there be a party? Well, this is appropriate. Very appropriate, usually. But who would come? How many people do we know? Well, our friends, uh, acquaintances. All three. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do the inviting. I know lots of people. We'll have music and dancing. A party here, but it will disturb my guests. 
then at my shop. Oh, no, this is foolish. A waste of money. Have you ever had an engagement party? No, of course not. Well, neither have I, so I ask you, what are we waiting for? It's time. Is there any trouble? No, but I'll be glad to get rid of this. Is Ernst here? Not yet. Look, see the lovely gift we're giving to Fräulein Schneider and Herr Schulz. Oh, hey, Clifford, you're back! Yes! Oh, Fräulein. Oh, may I? Oh. <laughs> Congratulations. And now open our present. Careful. Oh, Herr Schulz, look! Crystal! <laughs> Cut, Crystal! It's for fruit! Oh. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, Thank you, and I will keep it filled. I promise as long as we live, this bowl will not be empty. Fräulein Schneider. I am welcome. Fräulein Kost, forgive me. I did not invite you, but only because I know you work in the evening. <laughs> Tonight, I am free. I should live that long. At <laughs> my... My cousin? From Hamburg. Um, My cousin. <laughs> Otto. Uh, Rudy. Rudy. <laughs> it's Fräulein Schneider's party. If you must dance, dance with her. Oh, no, no, no. Dance with her, Otto. <laughs> Rudy. It's my pleasure, Fräulein. No, but I cannot. And oh, oh. you are so young. No, it's out of the question. Uh, unthinkable. Absolutely unthinkable. Clifford, Sally. Oh, you have the briefcase. Baubles from Paris, perfume, silk <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I guarantee it's a very good cause. And so, for you, it's a... uh, 75 marks. <laughs> it's a gift from heaven. And I must find Fräulein Schneider, if you excuse me. Dance with me. Oh, do I have to? Yes. Uh, Fräulein Schneider, I wish you much happiness. Oh, thank you, Herr Ludwig. I am sorry to be late, but uh, there was a meeting, an important meeting. One does what one must. <laughs> and now I should like to meet the groom-to-be. Uh, Herr Schulz, but where can he be? You know, I've been having a glass of schnapps with everybody. <laughs> you will forgive him if he's a little hoo-hoo, <laughs> you understand? <laughs> uh, good evening, good evening. You have a drink with me? Oh, uh, who is this? Uh, Herr Ludwig, an old friend. Uh, Herr Ludwig. Herr Schulz! Uh, you're most welcome, Herr Ludwig. You join me in the staff, sir? <laughs> and please, you must eat. There's so much food and, and so many pretty girls. I, I, I would introduce you to them, except I do not know their names. So you will introduce yourself, huh? and then you dance. Uh, Oh, would you like another snaps? Oh, uh, you did not give him the first one oh, yet. <laughs> yeah, let me do it. Thank you. Well, nothing for me? You have had enough. Oh, you hear, you hear. Not even married yet, and already she is in charge. <laughs> oh, it is pleasant. Oh, finally, somebody cares when I am foolish. Oh, there are many, many happy years to an outstanding couple. Oh, thank you. Oh. Beautiful dancing. Dance? Uh, not right now, thanks. Oh, by the way, Gottfried sends his regards. Who? Gottfried von Schwarzenbaum. Oh, don't tell me you've forgotten him. Yeah, I've forgotten him. Hey, Ludwig, remember me? Uh, yeah, um... Fräulein Kost. Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> you must dance with me, come. A pleasure, Fräulein. A Clifford, Clifford, bit. Will you watch my coat? And the briefcase? I'm sorry, since you did not wish to know my politics. This is the good cause. And our party would be the builders of the new Germany. Yeah, I've been reading your leader's book. But enough politics. What does it matter? We are friends, close friends, buddies. <laughs> what a delightful party. Herr Schulz is a most generous host, yeah? Yeah, well, he should be. Oh, he could afford ten times as much. They have all the money, the Jews. Herr Schulz? 
But I think I have uh, changed my mind. If you excuse me, Fräulein. It's my pleasure. Uh, Fräulein Schneider, I must speak to you. With all sincerity, you and I are old acquaintances. I have sent you many new lodgers, so let me urge you think what you are doing. This marriage is not advisable. I cannot put it too strongly for your own welfare. But what about Herr Schulz's welfare? He is not a German. He was born here. He is not a German! Good evening. Sorry, Clifford. Good night. Can you big wait? You're not leaving so early. I do not find the party amusing. Oh, but it is only just beginning. Come, we will make it amusing, huh? You and I, yeah? Ladies and gentlemen, wait. <coughs> Herr Ludwig, this is for you. The sun on the meadow is summery warm. The stag in the forest runs free. But gather together to greet the storm. Tomorrow belongs to me. The branch of the linden is leafy and green. The rhyme gives its gold to the sea. But somewhere a glory. Fresh from the tree. <laughs> Delicious. Please? Perhaps later. About the party last evening, I'm afraid I do not remember it too well. Was I that inebriated? 
Can you ever forgive me? For what? A few glasses of schnapps? I promise you, no more drinking. On our wedding day, you will be proud of me. I'm already proud of you. But as far as the wedding is concerned... Yes? There is a problem. <laughs> a new problem. A new problem? New to me, because I had not thought about it. But last night at the party, my eyes were opened. And? I saw that one can no longer dismiss the Nazis. They are my friends and neighbors, and how many others are there? Well, of course, many. And many are communists and socialists and social democrats. <coughs> so what is it? You want to wait till the next election and then decide? But if the Nazis come to power... You'll be married to a Jew, but also a German, a German as much as anyone. I need a license to let my rooms. If they take that away... They will take nothing away. And Fräulein Schneider, it's not always a good thing to settle for the lowest apple on the tree, the one easiest to reach. Climb up a little way, it is worth it. Up there, the apples are so much more delicious. And if I fall... I will catch you, I promise. I feel such tenderness for you. It's difficult to express. Are we too old for words like love? Far too old. I am no Juliet. You are no Romeo. We must be sensible. Well, then live alone. How many meals have you eaten alone? A thousand? Five thousand? Twenty thousand. Then be sensible. I mean, governments come, governments go. How much longer can we wait? Here. Let me peel an orange. <laughs> I will do it. <laughs> And the old despair that was often there suddenly ceases to be. For you wake one day, look around and say, somebody wonderful married. It's nothing. It's, it's, it's children on their way to school. Mischievous children, nothing more, I assure you. Just children, you know, young, full of mischief. You understand? I understand. Thinking. You wonder why I chose her Out of all the ladies in the world That's just the first impression What good's the first impression? If you knew her like I do It would change your approach If you could see her through my eyes You wouldn't wonder at all If you could see her through my eyes I guarantee you would fall like I did When we're in public together I hear society more But if they could see her through my eyes Maybe they'd leave how can I speak of her virtues? I don't know where to begin. She's clever, she's smart, she reads music. She doesn't smoke or drink gin. Yet when we're walking together. They sneer if I'm holding her hand But if they could see her through my eyes Maybe they'd all understand
Meine Damen und Herren, Mesdames und Messieurs, Ladies and Gentlemen. Is it a crime to fall in love? Can we ever tell where the heart truly leads us? All we are asking is ein bisschen Verständnis, a little understanding. Why can't the world live and live and last? Live and let live. I understand your objection. I grant you the problem's not small. But if you could see her, so my eyes, she wouldn't look Jewish at all. <laughs> Try again tomorrow. And you'll find something, I'm sure of it. President of a bank? They're closed. For good. I have the most marvelous news. Guess who came to visit me today? Bobby and Victor. <laughs> they say business at the club is way off since I left. So who's making a triumphant return immediately? <laughs> Isn't that heaven? Yeah, heaven. Oh, think of the money, Cliff. We need it so badly. Not that badly. I don't understand you, I really don't. First you tell me you're not going to Paris for Ernst anymore, even though it does seem the very easiest way in the world to make money. Or the hardest. One of these days I've got to sit you down and read you a newspaper. You'll be amazed at what's going on out there. Oh, you mean politics. What has that got to do with us? Oh yeah, right, it's got nothing to do with us. Sally, don't you understand? If you're not against all this, you're for it. Well, you might as well be. Come in. I intrude. Oh, no, no. Come in, Fräulein Schneider. Is that the fruit bowl? Is something wrong with it? I cannot keep it. But why? An engagement present, but there is no engagement. <laughs> what do you mean? We have reconsidered, Herr Schulz and I. Fräulein, you can't give up in that way. Well, yes, I can. It's easy for you. Easy to say, fight. And if you fail, what does it matter? You pack up your belongings, you go to Paris. And if you do not like Paris, where? It's easy for you. But if you were me, with time rushing by, what would you do? With the clock running down, what would you do? The young always have the cure Being brave, being sure And free But imagine If you were me Alone, like me And this is the only world I know some of a lifetime even so I'll take your advice what would you do would you pay the price what would you do suppose simply keeping still means you manage until the end what would you do my brave young friend Grown old like me with neither the will nor wish to run grown tired like me Storm in 
suppose you're one frightened voice being told what the choice must be. Go on, tell me. I will listen. What would you do if you were me? Fräulein, if you marry Herr Schulz, whatever happens, you have each other. All my life I've managed by myself. It's too old a habit to change. I battled alone, and I survived. There was a war, and I survived. There was a revolution, and I survived. There was an inflation, billions of marks for one loaf of bread, yet I survived. And if the Nazis come, I will survive. And if the communists come, I will still be here letting my rooms, for in the end, what other choice have I? This is my world. I regret very much returning the fruit bowl. It is truly magnificent. I regret oh, everything. Oh, Cliff, should I speak to her? What would you say? Oh, that it will all work itself out. I don't think she'd believe you. Seems nobody believes me today. Did it ever occur to you that I just might be a tremendous asset to that club? The fact is, they're waiting there this very minute to rehearse my numbers. So I really must go. The fact is, you're going a lot further than the Kit Kat Club. I am? You're going home. My home. America. You're joking. I'm going to sell this. She'll get us as far as Paris, and I can cable home for the steamship fare. What are you talking about? Leaving Berlin as soon as possible, tomorrow. Oh, we love it here! Sally, wake up! The party in Berlin is over. It was a lot of fun, but it's over. And it's going to get a lot worse. So how can we stay here? How can we raise a family? But is America the answer? Running away to America? We're not running away. There's nowhere to run to. We're going home. Oh, certainly. That's fine for you. But what about me? My career! You've got a new career. But, but I can work at the club for several months at least, and, and then in November... Oh, Cliff, Cliff, I want the world for our baby. All the most elegant, expensive things. We'll talk about it tomorrow, on the train. Cliff, wait! We can't just uproot our lives that quickly. Oh, no? You give me one hour. Sit down, and don't move. Or better still, start packing. There's plenty to do. Here, call the club. Tell them goodbye. Yeah.
think you're doing here? Can I speak for a moment? Get your coat, I'm taking you home. America, you mean? To live on your mummy's charity? I'll get a job. The stock market? I'll think of something. Well, maybe, but this is sure. This? What the hell is this? You keep talking about this as if it really existed. When are you going to admit the only way you got this job, any job, is by sleeping with someone? Just shut up! All this talk about your career, my God, for once in your life, face the truth about yourself. Now, don't you think it's your turn? Warning, Spear. I don't care. Sally! Clifford! Will you join me for a drink? Oh, not just now. I've been trying to reach you at Fräulein Schneider's. I have another urgent errand for you. Sorry. At this time, I've The answer I'm... is no. Oh, what is wrong? Clifford, you are angry with me. Am I? Well, it is because of politics. If you were a German, you would understand these things. Goodbye, Ernst. No, no, wait, 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 wait. It is very important, this errand. I pay 200 marks. Go to hell. But this is most upsetting. I'm your close friend, Clifford. I'm so fond of you. Take your hands off. I know you need the money, so why won't you go? It is because of that Jew at the party. <laughs> <laughs> And now, my dames and messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, the Kit Kat Club is so happy! To welcome back once again, Hoyland Sally Bowles. Here is Oh, Campbell. 
Say goodbye. Oh, your eyes. Oh, it's nothing, a little accident. Uh, where are you going? Well, I've taken a room on the other side of the Nodendorf Platz. I think it will be easier for her. Uh, you are leaving also, you and Fräulein Bowles? Yeah, we're going home to America. America? I sometimes thought of going there. Why don't you? The way things look here. Oh, it will pass, I promise you. I hope you're right. Well, I know I'm right because I understand the Germans. After all, what am I? A German. Oh, Fräulein Sally, I've, I've come to say goodbye. All good fortune. I And I brought you a little farewell gift. Uh, Italian oranges. Delicious. Goodbye, Herr Schultz. I wish you mazel. Oh, mazel. Yes. Yes, that is what we all need. I've been uh, packing for you. You won't be able to find a thing. We leave today for Paris, remember? With that face? Oh, I got into a little fight last night. Didn't you hear about it? You should have seen the other three guys. Not a mark on them. <laughs> it's about time to go for the train. I've, I've got the tickets. Don't say it! Whatever it is. Let's just forget the last 12 hours, okay? Forget what I said to you at the Kit Kat Club. Forget that you've gotten even with me staying out all night. Okay? You're so cool. You know what I'd love? A spot of gin. We've got some, haven't we? I mean, I, I think one must. At this time in the morning? How about a prairie oyster? Gin. Can't be good for expectant mothers. Where, where's your coat, your fur coat? Did you leave it at the club? I left it at the doctor's office. Were you sick last night? Is that why you didn't come home? Oh, darling. You were such an innocent, really. My one regret is I honestly believe you would have been a wonderful father. And perhaps someday you will be. Oh yes, and I have another regret. That greedy doctor. I'm going to miss my fur coat. Isn't it funny? It always ends this way. Even when I do finally love someone terribly for the first time. But it's still not quite enough. I'd spoil it, Cliff. I'd run away with the first exciting thing that came along. Or oh, you would. That's not true. I never loved you for any reason. Not if there was a baby. To hold us together, you mean? Oh, Cliff, what a terrible burden for an infant, don't you think? It's about time to go for the train. Ah. 
Sally, I, I... I could go tomorrow. Or the next day. Here's your ticket to Paris. Sally, if for any reason you do decide to use it, you can uh, contact me at the American Express Club. I'll be there till Friday. The truth is, Cliff, I've always rather hated Paris. Oh, Sally. Goodbye. Cliff! Dedicate your book to me. Letzte Ansage. Berlin Paris Express. Abfahrt 4 Uhr. Bahnsteig 17. Alle einsteigen bitte. Letzte Ansage. Deutsche Grenzkontrolle, Ihre Pass bitte. I hope you have enjoyed your stay in Germany, Mr. Breitschau. And you will return again soon. It's not very likely. You did not find our country beautiful. Yeah, I found it beautiful. A good journey, sir. There was a cabaret and there was a master of ceremonies and there was a city called Berlin in a country called Germany and it was the end of the world and I was dancing with Sally Bowles and we were both fast asleep Willkommen, bienvenue, welcome. Fremde, étranger, stranger. Glücklich zu sehen, je suis enchanté. Happy to see you, bleibe, reste, stay. Willkommen, bienvenue, welcome. Im Cabaret, a Cabaret. Meine Damen und Herren, Mesdames et Messieurs, Ladies and Gentlemen, where are your troubles now? Forgotten? I told you so. We have no troubles here. Here. Life is beautiful. The girls are beautiful. Even the orchestra is beautiful. <laughs> children on their way to school. You understand? I understand. One does what one must. It'll all work out. It's only politics. And what has that got to do with us? Be sensible. 
If the Nazis come, what other choice have I? I know I'm right. After all, what am I? A German? If you were a German, you would understand. Wiedersehen, a bientôt.